Now when Deepcool sent over their latest CH360 case and Mystique 360 AIO cooler, I knew it was time to put together another gaming PC build. This time I wanted to go with components that were once at the higher end of the performance spectrum, but continue to fall in price due to newer releases. The only new parts of course in today's build are the case and the cooler provided by Deepcool for purposes of this video. First we have the case, the CH360 is available in a digital or standard option, and both come with pre-installed ARGB fans, one 120mm at the back and two 140mm at the front. The magnetic side tempered glass and mesh hybrid side panel allows for decent airflow, and the quick removal makes building inside this thing a very pleasant experience. We also have the aforementioned Mystique 360 AR which can be front mounted to this case and as you saw at the start comes with a 2.8 inch LCD screen. Aside from uploading your own GIFs and images, it can also be used to monitor temps in conjunction with Deepcool software. I decided to build in the standard case today. Let's take a look at some of the deals I found. The first is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. I've seen a lot of used ones on Amazon warehouse deals lately, and it's not uncommon to find them on eBay for less than £150. Maybe investing in AM5 makes more sense these days, but AM4 is still kicking, and processor prices continue to fall. I've bought two of these recently, one for £170 and another on the way from eBay for £140. The 5800X will be sitting atop a B550M Pro VDH I got for £20 less than the brand new marked price because it was open box, £89 instead of £109. Corsair Vengeance LPX is usually my go-to DDR4. This 32GB 3600MHz kit cost 55 quid on eBay, a bit less than the 75 to 80 it usually sells for. No motherboard bundle is complete of course without storage, so I picked up a cheap A-Data 1TB NVMe SSD for £35. I was the sole bidder and the drive was unused. To power our build I found an MSI Mag A850 GF. These usually go for over £100 but I bought this from the Amazon warehouse for just £81. It was described as used but in good condition, though it turned out to be brand new, with all the original unused cables included. Thanks to the release of Nvidia's 40 series GPUs, 30 series cards seem to be getting cheaper all the time and thanks to a further 20% off promotion, I was able to get this Palette Game Rock 3080 for £369, nice from Amazon. This was also described as used and while the outer box had some tearing, the card was still in the anti-static bag with the seal across it. The design of this card is sure to split opinions, but it was the cheapest I could find anywhere, so it will do nicely. The 3080 does lack frame gen support and it will be more power hungry than its newer counterparts, but it's still an excellent choice if the price is right. That said, it's also worth considering the Radeon 6800, as that has more VRAM and can also be found for under £400. With every new generation of hardware comes a lower price for the older stuff and there are plenty of deals to be found out there. The GPU is pretty chunky but sits inside the CH360 with room to spare. We can also install more fans at the top and adding more will certainly be a good idea for additional airflow. 
As I said before, going with a newer socket like AM5 may prove more sensible in the long run, but I wanted to show you that buying slightly older yet once higher end hardware can be a good way of saving some money while still offering a solid gaming experience. Speaking of which, let's see how this machine performs. The first boot is always the scariest, but it's also the most satisfying. After this, we installed the DeepCore software. DeepCore also sent over these pixel bits that we can use to customize the front of the case. In future, when I appear on camera, I plan to have a different design on the front of my case each time. Every time I went to open a packet though, my dog didn't like the noise, so I'll try and distract him before I open them. Now I plan to have an even fuller benchmark suite of the 3080 in action in another video, perhaps with a more powerful processor. But for this one, I ran a handful of games and we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077. 1440p here with a high preset for an average of 82 FPS. I stuck to native resolutions here and avoided any form of upscaling such as FSR or DLSS. The 1% low was 60 and the 0.1% low was 39. Baldur's Gate 3 is up next, 1440p with the Ultra preset and this was no trouble for a system like this one, at least not in this area, though I'm sure things will get a little more demanding as we progress through the game. The 1% low was 88 and the 0.1% figure was 52. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt up next 1440p with the Ultra preset TAAU as well for an average of 96 frames per second. Just like in Cyberpunk, the 5800X may be a bit of a limitation in those busier areas, resulting here in a 1% low of 57 and a 0.1% low of 47. I definitely think we could benefit from overclocking the CPU a little bit. And it's worth remembering that, as I said before, you may want to consider the AM5 platform, such as the 7500F or 7600. Battlefield 5 up next, I ran this one in DX11 mode. DX12 did produce a higher frame rate, about 30 or 40 FPS higher, but it did stutter a lot more. I stuck with DX11 then for the purpose of consistency, and here we saw 128 FPS with a 1% low of 69, very nice, and a 0.1% low of 58. Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p with the ultra textures and everything else set to high, along with the geometry and grass level of detail sliders set to their respective maximum. Here we saw 82 FPS with a 1% low of 63 and a 0.1% low of 53. So a very consistent experience here, even in and around towns and cities like Valentine and Saint Denis. The game looks absolutely fantastic with these visual settings. Counter-Strike 2 is our final game. At 1440p with the lowest settings here, we were seeing 349 FPS with a 1% low of 138 and a 0.1% low of 74. I was quite surprised to see what sort of deals were around on cars like the 3080 these days. Thanks to Deepcore for sending over their CH360, CH360 Digital and their Mystique 360 AIO liquid cooler as well because both of those have been absolutely fantastic as part of this build. Temperatures have remained cool for the processor and there's plenty of room left in our case to add more fans to and perhaps a bulkier graphics card. Most importantly thanks to you for watching.